So I went to go see Riddick. It's the third in a series, following Pitch Black and the Chronicles of Riddick. And like both the other movies, this one is written and directed by a man named David Toohey, who is actually one of the writers on The Fugitive, believe it or not. And all three of them star Vin Diesel as the Riddick character. I have to say, this is a series that I never thought we'd see a third installment of, because the second one, The Chronicles of Riddick, it bombed so badly in the box office. It barely made back its total uh, production value worldwide. Domestically in the U.S., uh, its lifetime gross barely broke half of the production budget. It's, it was just a gigantic, gigantic loss. Um, and so I guess we can thank the uh, recent success of the Fast and Furious franchise for this. So, um, thanks. I guess. Now, I imagine it's because the second movie did so poorly that Riddick is kind of a narrative mess. Um, it seems to want to reboot the franchise without actually rebooting anything. It, it sort of wants to keep the first and second movies entirely as canon. Let's, it goes out of its way to let you know that everything happened. Um, and yet it wants to take Riddick's character, his personality, back to where he was in the first movie, just kind of ignoring anything that happened in the second. And um, it, it goes out of its way to, to show you how these changed and why they changed. And it spends a good 40 minutes sort of showing you that sort of regression in his character. And because of that, you really kind of have two movies here. Um, you know, one 40-minute sort of movie, character piece, and the other hour and 20 minutes of the sci-fi, action-y, horror movie that uh, you signed on for. Now, in the first 40 minutes, we have Tui's attempt to take Riddick's character back to where he was at the end of the first movie. Uh, so what happens is the people he was with at the end of the second movie unceremoniously drop him off on this hostile planet, try and kill him, and leave. They failed, but, you know, he's still in bad shape, and he chalks up his not seeing the, the double cross coming to his being civilized, and so he tries to savage it up a bit. And, um... You know, the, the 40 minutes consists of maybe 15 minutes of flashback, sort of showing you what happened in between films 2 and 3, and the rest of it is just showing you this world, this, this hostile world, explaining the dangers of it, and it's, it's nice, but we don't need 40 minutes of it. It can be accomplished in 15 minutes at most, just montage. Uh, to be fair, there are a couple things that are shown in the um, in that 40 minutes that do have a nice payoff later on at the end. It, it gives you a nice connection with some things that happen that, that give some things a little bit more of an emotional punch than they would have if it was just a montage. But as a whole, the first 40 minutes is unnecessary and just too much. Now, towards the end of those first 40 minutes, we find out there's some really nasty creatures living on this planet that only really come out under certain specific conditions. Uh, just like in Pitch Black, where they came out in darkness, here they come out during rain, and there's a really big rainstorm slowly making its way towards Riddick. So he decides that he's going to set off this beacon that's going to call in bounty hunters because the beacon sends who activates it, and he has a gigantic bounty on his head. Uh, and so the, the bounty hunters come and land, and we kick off Pitch Black Part 2, really. No, I'm not kidding, it's really Pitch Black Part 2, or, or actually, it's even worse, it's Pitch Black again with a different coat of paint. Um, the first large portion really doesn't follow Riddick at all, it follows the bounty hunters that come down, and we, we see them interacting with each other, we get to know their characters, there's some dialogue and some, some funny lines and yada yada, and um, it's really more showing them trying to track him down, but we're really seeing how he's stalking them, and he's just so much better than them. That's really the first chunk there. And then, after a certain point, they do actually capture him, and he has to band up, uh, band up with them in order to fight off the, the horrible rain monsters, and which is really what you saw in the trailers. Um, yeah, that's, it's the same movie. They, they even... They even do some of the exact same things. You know, he's asking uh, if people are scared of him. He does the whole uh, him and chains sort of banging the chains on the on the, the beams that he did in Pitch Black. Um, 
There's even a scene in Pitch Black where he sneaks up behind someone who really should know there's someone behind him and um, cuts off a little bit of their hair. Same exact thing. A different setting, obviously, but the same actions. Um, and I, I get what they're doing. There's some narrative things there where they're really trying to mirror the first movie. Um, and, and if you see it and you've seen Pitch Black, you'll, you'll sort of see why. But at the same time, it, it kind of feels lazy. Um, I mean, it's still entertaining enough. It's, it's different, like different events, but same plot um, with, with some of very specific similar uh, actions that go on. But again, kind of kind of lazy. So this film and all the films in the Riddick series in general, they fall under that corny B-grade sci-fi subgenre that exists out there. Now, don't take that the wrong way. I I enjoy a good corny B-grade sci-fi movie. Um, they can be a lot of fun, actually. This whole series is a lot of fun, but you got to get a couple things right in order to, for them to be good. Uh, for one, the the writer and director. Um, they need to have that sort of over-earnest, eager zeal, um, where they seem to be having much more fun going, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if, ooh, this would be neat, ooh, this would be neat, than they do about um, worrying if things kind of end up seeming a little bit derivative. Uh, so you, you get these crazy tangents and, and weird world-building that didn't need to be there, but it's, it's just, they thought it would be neat, and so they threw it in, and just, ooh, they think that this pose looks really cool, and oh, wouldn't that be, it's just, there's something about that that's just endearing to me. And then on top of that, you need to have actors that are good enough that they can carry the really, really corny dialogue that, uh, um, that comes about from that process. And the series has got that. I mean, Carl Urban's in it, uh, Katie Stackoff I like. Um, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Vin Diesel, but he's perfect for the role of Riddick. I just perfect. He has the presence and the delivery of those really cheesy lines. It's just great. It's a lot of fun. Um, but that said, that sort of movie is really not for everyone. So unless you're in the group that really likes those films, or if you just really want to see Pitch Black with a different coat of paint. Riddick is, is unless you're in that group, it's, it's just skippable. There's really no reason to see this. If you're an honest sci-fi fan, eh, you're gonna be, you're gonna be looking at it going, what? Where is this? No, why? Eh? Um, but, uh, and if you're, if you're just a normal person looking for a fun action movie, you're going to be a little bit annoyed by all the slow parts or the, the random digressions or things of that nature. So, really, this is kind of more of a rented on DVD or Blu-ray than anything else. Um, although, if you disagree with me, uh, please let me know. I'd love to know why. And, uh, or if you agree with me, uh, that's always fun too, right? But, um, until next time, folks. Enjoy film.